So you want to learn Java programming? Well then you're in the right corner of the internet. I'm recording these video lessons on the foundations of Java to build up to my later tutorials on video game programming and robotics. So if you're in interested in any of those things, please continue watching. If you already think that you're a pretty strong programmer, then feel free to skip around the video and see what you can learn. If you think you have room for improvement or you're just barely starting out, then definitely please follow along. This is written for you. Now before I get too far, there are two not specifically programming things that I want to talk about. The first thing is the misconception that programming is hard. Now I know people scoff at me when I tell them that programming is not that hard, but bear with me. If I came up to you and spoke fluent Spanish when you knew not a word of Spanish, then of course the language is going to seem complicated and extremely hard. However, if you were to grow up in a native Spanish-speaking country, then you can grasp the language at an extremely young age. In a similar way, programming requires time to build a vocabulary, but that does not mean that the foundations of programming are beyond your grasp. You can learn how to program. The second thing that I want to talk about kind of goes along with the first, is that programming is going to take time. Just because programming isn't as complex as many people think it is, doesn't mean you're going to become a master hacker overnight. You're going to need to put time into this. But if you want it, and you're willing to put in just a half an hour to an hour a day programming, I can assure you that you will be a very competent programmer in no time. <laughs> it's kind of like a workout program. But okay, I'll stop preaching and start programming. The first thing I like to do when teaching programming is demystify the act of programming a little bit. Let's face it, when we look inside the windows of Microsoft or Valve, and you see the diligent programmers typing away in their cubicles, sometimes it seems like magic is happening between their keystrokes and the final product of an operating system or video game. Well, I'm going to reveal the man behind the screen. Spoiler alert, it isn't magic. The act of programming is actually a lot like using a translation software. Hey, this is a a parallel between my Spanish analogy I made earlier. Look at me go. If I were to use a translation software, I would write down my English statements in a text file somewhere, and then send that text file to the translation software, which would return my English statements back to me, but now in Spanish. When I'm programming, I write down my thoughts using a computer programming language into any old text file, and then I send that file to a program called a compiler, which works just like a translator, in that it returns to me the machine language, or the executable, that I can now run on my computer. If you've seen anybody programming before, you might say, wait a minute, that's not just any old text file, there are colors and buttons everywhere. This is because people usually write code in an IDE, or an integrated development environment. Alternatively to an IDE, you could write your code in just any old notepad document and then manually send it to a compiler and you'd get an executable back just fine. IDEs just streamline the process, so when you press play, it will send your code to the compiler, get the executable back, and run it in one fell swoop. The IDE I'm going to be using for my examples is called NetBeans. The link to it will be given in the description of the video. So at this time, please go ahead and download it and install it. Okay, yeah, at this time I'm going to assume you have NetBeans. Let's open NetBeans, and your screen should look something like mine. I'm going to start writing code now, so if you weren't watching before, now's a good time to start. Go ahead and click on File, New Project. And we're going to create a new empty Java application, so click the Java folder, and then Java application for the project. Next. Rename your, your project, whatever you'd like. I'm going to call mine Hello Universe. Finish. This will create a new blank project. You can see it here on the left in your Project Explorer. Now in the, the program editing window, we can see an army of asterisks assaulting us. There are so many asterisks. The asterisks, the first thing I'm going to talk about, are all comments. You can really, literally, put whatever you want inside of these lines. The compiler will completely skip them. They're comments. They're meant for English statements to make the code easier for you to read or for others to come back and read after you've written it. You can either do them with all these slashes and then asterisks, or you can do just two slashes. Oops. 
and this will comment out this single line. This is a comment. Now comments are very good programming practice. For now though, I'm going to delete them all. This is going to make the code much more readable for these first introductory lessons we're doing. So when I was first learning to program, I always felt a need to understand at least a little bit what every line of code was doing in this the template source code. But don't get caught up on trying to understand exactly what every word is doing. We will see this code over and over again because these lines do not change. So as we keep doing this, this will become second nature to you. For now I'm just going to do a quick overview of these lines. The first line being package hello universe for me. This is an organizational line that's telling the compiler where our source code is located. You can look here on the left, you can see the main.java, this is the source code that we're editing, and it's located inside of the hello universe package. This is telling the compiler where the source code is located. Now for our small project here, this might seem kind of like an unimportant line, but once we start creating larger projects with several different source codes inside of it, it becomes imperative that we use package organization. Otherwise, the code will just get out of control. So that brings us to the next line, public class main. For right now, we're going to think of this as another organizational structure. This creates the main class. Now we're going to get into much more detail in classes in just a minute here, so hang on. But think of it right now as a class that holds bits of code. Inside of the class, we have this code. The class is defined by these two curly braces, the starting curly brace defining the beginning of the class, and this ending curly brace defines the end of the class. So here's the class main. Moving on inside of the main class, we see this horrible eyesore of a line. Public static void, main with a lowercase m, string block brackets args. This is quite the horrendous line of code. What does it do? This acts as the main entry point of our code. Think for a second if we had the entire source code of the video game Halo. That would be thousands upon thousands upon thousands of lines of code. How does the compiler know where to start right reading that code? It would be at the public static void main string block bracket args, of course. This is where the compiler will start reading our code, and that's all we need to know about it for right now. So inside of here is the main method. This is where we start writing our code, and let's do that. The first line we're going to write is a simple printing function. For Java, it's going to be system with a capital S dot out dot print ln. Print ln stands for print line. Then use a parenthesis. Inside the parentheses, we're going to use, we're going to put in the text that we want to print out. So inside of quotation marks, we're gonna, I'm going to put hello universe exclamation mark. At the end of the statement, we put a semicolon. Semicolons are like the period of the programming world. Uh, we're done with this statement. Print out hello universe, period. You might say, hey, wait a second, these lines don't have semicolons at the end of them. That's because they're organizational lines of code. As we go along, I'll let you know when we don't need to put semicolons at the end. For now, just assume we need to put them at the end of our statements. And that concludes our first program, so let's go up here and run it at the green triangle, click it, and it will now compile and then run the code, printing out Hello Universe. Very good. That concludes our first program. Now armed with the system.out.println function, we can do really not that much, actually. But like I said, this is about building your programming vocabulary. In our next project, we're going to introduce several new topics that will greatly expand your capabilities, and therefore it's going to be a lot more fun. So thank you for following along so far, but let's continue onward to part two.